By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we've got two aggressive decks playing at, uh, against each other in a seven-point singleton finals. Yes, this is a finals of the month of May. And we've got Jeremy who's playing a black and red deck. It's uh, it's pretty aggro and it's packed with direct damage as well. But his opponent, Adam, he may even have more direct damage up his sleeve because he's playing with a mono red deck with creatures like Bull Lightning, but of course uh, a lot of burn as well, like Eternal Flame. Uh, he's got Disintegrates in there. Well, a whole bunch of damage, damage, damage. So both of these players kind of want to have really quick games and really target the life total. So maybe this could be a super short episode. Who knows? Um, like I said, this is a seven point singleton match and seven point singleton is a format in old school where cards are allocated um, an amount of points. So certain cards, cards that are pretty strong and see a lot of play. So those cards get points and you cannot spend more than seven points when you're building your deck. So here you can see an overview. This is uh, from January 20th of this year when this overview was made and you can see cards are worth one point two point three points or four points and all the other cards are worth zero points so you can play with as many of those as you want but when you're building you got to make sure okay am I not crossing the seven point line for example you cannot play an ancestral recall and a soul ring in the same deck because they're both four points now before we go to the deck decks because I've got beautiful pictures of both of these decks with the points there as well so you can see what choices they've made and how they spent their points. Now, before I do that, I just want to point out that if you want to skip that part, you can check the description below and there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. And as for here, I'm going to start um, with the deck deck and I'm going to start with the player on the left. That is Jeremy. So we're going to look at his red and black deck. And here we see the deck of Jeremy. So as you can see, it's black and it's red. And you can see those red dice on the cards. Those indicate the points. So like I said, you can only spend seven points. So Demonic Tutor is quite high in the point system. Makes sense, right? It's such a powerful card. So he's chosen to put that in here for three points. Then he went for the direct damage with Fireball and Disintegrate one point each and with a Dark Ritual. And I think that Dark Ritual is kind of a sign of what Jeremy wants to do. He wants to get out of the gates quickly, deal a lot of combat damage with his smaller creatures, uh, you know, Black Knight, Order of the Abbot Hand, Urk Raiders, great that you play Urk Raiders, by the way. Uh, Junin Afrit, another card that I'm really happy to see, uh, three mana for a three, three flyer. I mean, that is pretty solid. Problem, of course, is that two black during your upkeep, but you know what? If you're the aggressor and you're just putting a lot of damage on the table quickly, you may force your opponent, Adam, to, you know, to spend removal on your Juno and Freed, and then you have your mana open again. So I think in this deck, it, it works pretty well. And we also see a Wheel of Fortune, because with a deck like this, you tend to play out your cards fairly quickly, and then you're running out of gas, and a Wheel of Fortune is kind of ideal. We also see a few cards that are a bit higher in casting costs, so that are a bit more late game to kind of maybe you know, get the, get the win in, and that is a Nightmare, which I'm really excited to see. I love Nightmare. And also maybe a card I like even more, the Demonic Hordes. It's just such a cool card. You can start killing your lands of your opponent. And uh, yeah, that's just a fun thing to do. And the art is fantastic. And the flavor, you know, if you don't pay the upkeep cost, they start hoarding on your lands and destroying your lands. Just a very cool card. I also like, by the way, the uh, Kumbach Witches in this deck. I think it's quite relevant, in, and especially in Singleton, you see a lot of one toughness creatures and Kumbach Witches is just ideal to get rid of those. And I think actually that's gonna be a relevant uh, ability in in this matchup as well, because I believe Adam has quite some 1-1 uh, some one -one creatures, but we'll look at his list in a moment. Another card I'd like to point out here is Howl From Beyond. I just think it's really cool. And I'm kind of hoping that, uh, that Howl From Beyond can play a role here, because I think it's just a cool card and you don't see it often. So it would be nice uh, if it could really, you know, get his uh, get his spot here in the in the sunshine and maybe convince a few players to also play with Howl from Beyond. So here we see this deck list. It looks very um, very dangerous and very to the point. I must say this. So if Jeremy's deck is working, I think you know he can get it. He can have his opponent killed at what turn five or something. So a very business like deck, I can say. And uh, these are the cards of Jeremy. And we're now going to look at the deck of his opponent, Adam. And here we see the deck of Adam. And I have to say, Adam, I mean, for mono red, this is spicy, man. Like, it may seem weird that I say that about a mono red deck because usually mono red 
is a lot of small creatures and direct damage. Now, we do see that in this deck. I think it's kind of clear what Adam, you know, wants to do. He wants to get out his, his, his one drops, his two drops, his three drops. There's kind of a nice buildup in this deck. He's got the Goblin King and he's playing with all the goblins that he can find, right? I mean, we see even a Goblin Hero in this deck, which I love, by the way. I think that's really spicy. He's playing with uh, Goblin Digging Team, which I like. So that makes sense, right, with the Goblin King strategy. So just attack, deal a lot of damage, and finish uh, him off of, like, Chain Lightning and all the other, like, Disintegrate and all the other direct damage spells. We also see an Eternal Flame in this deck, which works because he's playing Mono Red. So I think that's really cool. But the reason I'm also calling it spicy is because there are just a few really funny things happening in this deck. One of those things is Goblins of the Flark and Dwarven Lieutenant. I mean, just, just so funny. Goblins of the Flark buries itself you know, as soon as there is a dwarf on the same side as he is, right? So there's actually a scenario possible here where, um, you know, Adam doesn't pay attention, plays out his dwarven lieutenant with the goblins of the flark on the board, and then, you know, the goblins of the flark is gone. So that is just really kind of funny. I also love the fact that you're playing with orcish captain. It's just hilarious. I also love the fact you're playing with uh, with the Mie Jin. Those cards are just really cool. But besides that, there's more going on in this deck because he's got some mana traps going on in his deck. And maybe the best card to start with to kind of explain that is Power Surge. So this, this is a format with mana burn. That's important to know. So Power Surge is an enchantment for two red, right? And it reads, and, and, and I'm just going to read the current Oracle text, by the way. It reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Surge deals X damage to that player where X is the number um, of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn. So basically you get punished when you don't tap out. So you've got to tap out. If you don't, you get damaged for each land that is not tapped. And then he's got another trick up his sleeve. He's also playing with Mana Barbs. And uh, Mana Barbs is actually kind of gaining a little bit on, on popularity um, in some of the more aggressive strategies like this one. Because what Mana Barbs uh, does is one red and three Whenever any land is tapped, Mana Barbs does one damage to the land's controller. And thinking about it, this card is even better in Singleton. Why? Because in this format, um, if you want to play Soul Ring, you got to pay four points out of the seven, right? So you're not going to do that. If you want to play a Mox, you got to pay, um, uh, pay three points. So it's really difficult in this format to play with a lot of artifact mana. So that means that Mana Barbs works extra good because a lot of players will have to tap lands. So if you've got a Mana Barbs and a Power Surge in play, it means your opponent is going to take damage regardless whether or not they tap the lands. If they tap a land, Mana Barb works. If they don't tap a land, Power Surge works. Then there's another interesting card in here because you would think if you're playing uh, the strategy that goes with these two cards, you want your opponent to kind of tap down the lands, untap the lands, do all sorts of crazy shenanigans with it. But he's also playing with Winter Orb. And Winter Orb says, as long as it's untapped, players can't untap more than one land during their untapped step. I do like the idea of, for example, playing a Power Surge and your opponent's like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta use all my mana. I'm gonna tap out completely. And then the following turn, you say, okay, man, thank you for tapping everything. Now I'm gonna play a Winter Orb and you can only untap one land every single turn. So I do like that. That is really, really gonna slow down his opponent if he can pull that off. So. I have to say, I'm really liking this strategy. I always like it when there's more to a deck than, than meets the eye at first glance. So I first thought, okay, you're playing mono red, it's gonna be burn, it's gonna be smaller creatures and just dealing a lot of damage as fast as possible. You're still doing that, but there's more to the story. There's this whole mana land plan, right? Uh, we also have Ankh of Mishra, by the way, which goes great with the plan. Of course, Ankh of Mishra, you get two damage every time you play out of land. Now, there is there is a little, it is dangerous to play the strategy. Let me put it that way, because as soon as, um, you know, as, as soon as your opponent finds a way to kind of play underneath it or not take as much damage as you, then it's going to be a problem. And I think in this matchup, you know, Jeremy also has a deck with a lot of smaller creatures, a lot of burn. It may not always work as well. And then maybe the last card to point out, now that I'm looking at it, talking about that whole whole land strategy, is of course the Blood Moon, which can do, which can do some work here, but not not as much, I think, as in uh, as maybe in other matchups. So this is the deck of Adam. We've already seen the deck of Jeremy. So these are the two decks that actually made it to the final 
of May because this is the final of the May monthly. So we're going to look at these two decks going head to head. So get ready, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride because we're now going to the games. Game number one and here we go the finals of seven point singleton of the May monthly and we've got Jeremy on the left with the black and a red deck. It looks like he's taking a mulligan here and he's taking on Adam who's playing with a mono red and look at that he's even taking a double mulligan starting with five. So this is looking pretty good for Adam already. I mean Adam has an aggressive deck mono red and then your opponent mulling down to five that's great news for him and he's also on the play so only four cards in hand now there's a strip mine taking care of the swamp so let's see if Jeremy yeah Jeremy does have more lands playing another swamp there's a mountain by Adam second swamp pass turn and there is a creature the orcs a 2-2 that can only block creatures with um, power one or cannot block creatures with power one or greater I should say and there is a Hypnotic Spectre on the side of Jeremy, responded by a Disintegrate. So that's good for Adam that he's able to neutralize the Hypnotic Spectre. And I think only three cards left for Jeremy, and he's playing a Setch Troll, which is really good, because it's going to kind of stop Adam from attacking here. And Adam playing out a Brass Man and Orcish Artillery. So Orcish Artillery, you can tap and deal two damage to any target, but you take three damage yourself. It's going to be interesting to see if he's going to use it and how he's going to use it. And I think that this integrate of the set troll is going to be kind of a drag here for Adam. There's that Hammerheim by Jeremy, so he doesn't have any land issues, it seems. And he's passing turn. Adam untapping, playing Hammerheim of his own, playing an Orcish, or sorry, a Goblin Hero and playing an Ankh of Mishra. So Ankh of Mishra punishes you for playing out land. Every time you put out a land, you take two damage. And it looks like Jeremy, you know, being the mono red player and having enough lands, he's not really going to care that much for the Ank, but it could really start working against Jeremy. There we see the Orcish Artillery activation. Adam dropping to 16. Oh, sorry, Adam dropping to 17. Jeremy dropping to 16. Like I said, the Orcish Artillery deals 3 damage to its controller when you use it. Let's see what he can do. It's, he's a little bit in the tank here. He needs to find a way... To work around that set troll, there is a chaos orb. Could decide to flip on the hammerheim, kind of denying Jeremy from red. Not choosing to do so at this time, but passing turn. So Jeremy going through his hand, looking at his options. Is he going to play something? Nope. Changed his mind. Does he have maybe a shatter? He was thinking about shattering the chaos orb, and then in response, animal activated. Looks like that's not happening. Going through his hand again. Or maybe actually he wants to remove the Ankh of Mishra. Of course, it depends what's in his hand and, and, and what his future plan is. If he's got a lot of land in hand or maybe, you know, if you have a drain life or an X spell, you actually want to play out a lot of land. And I'm sure Jeremy would love to have access to more lands than just four. But he's still on 16 though, so. Going through the hand again. Really in the tank here. Okay, here we go. Playing a detonate on the Ankh of Mishra. That means two damage for Adam and he loses the artifact. After that, he plays his land, so he doesn't take damage from that. So that makes sense, of course. And the Orcish Artillery activation from Adam. And look at Adam's life total. He's actually lower than Jeremy, and Jeremy hasn't attacked at all. And uh, he's passing turn, Adam. Cannot find a way to work around the Setch Troll. If he can work around the Setch Troll, it's actually pretty good. Because he's got a lot of creatures to attack with. But that Setch is really clocking up the ground. And what does Jeremy want to do? Because Adam is already on 12. Remember, both of these decks are quite aggressive. Exactly, he's attacking, dropping him to 9. Adam is taking the damage. And Adam's probably thinking, you know what? I can just swing in with everything next turn, deal some damage. So I'm pretty good with this. But I'm sure Jeremy has a plan with this attack. He's on 9. Looks like he's kind of counting the life, looking at the lands. Maybe if he's got like a fireball in hand, he could play it for five. Okay, he's got a drain life. He can play a drain life for three here. So he's going to drop to six and he's going to gain three. Interestingly enough, he's leaving the Hammerheim untapped, maybe indicating that he has a bolt or something up his sleeve here. And I wonder if Adam's going to gonna decide to flip. There's the attack for five in total, it seems. No, not the Orcish Artillery. So four in total. So Adam's going to drop to 13. Is he going to use 
The Chaos Orb, yeah, I think that's a wise decision. Chaos Orb on the Hammerheim. In response, do we see that bolt that I talked about, or doesn't he have it? Yeah, there's the bolt. Okay, wow, look at Adam's life total. He's on three. I mean, this is really dangerous for Adam, you know. Um, the good news, of course, is that his opponent doesn't have a red source anymore. Attacking with the Setch, chump blocking with the Brass Man. There's a Greed, so you could start using the Greed to dig for maybe a mountain or something to finish Adam off. Three life is just not a lot. Attacking here with the hero, interestingly enough, he's not attacking with the orc. That's something that I didn't, that I don't really understand because the orc cannot block the Setch Troll. There we see a greed activation, by the way, from Jeremy looking for something to kill Adam here. Adam has to block that orcish artillery or block the Setch Troll with the orcish artillery. And again, I don't understand why he didn't attack with the orc, but you know, Mistakes are being made, and now he is attacking with the orc. Needs the goblin hero as a chump blocker. Also playing uh, the goblin from the antiquities, a 1-1 one -one goblin. So he can chump block with that, and then maybe attack with the hero. He could have made that decision, putting Adam on 5. Looks like Adam is looking up something. Maybe something to do with the greed, or the setch troll, who knows. But wow, this is a very exciting first game. I actually thought when I looked at both of these deck lists, okay, one player is simply going to trample over the other, depending on the luck of the draw. Uh, but this is much more interesting. Both players, you know, look at the life totals. Five for Jeremy, three for Adam. I mean, this is everyone's game. Ooh, Demonic Tutor, this could be over. Mountains, looking up a mountain. Does that mean that he's got direct damage? There we go, boom, fireball. Jeremy wins this one. Yeah, as soon as I saw him... Going for the mountain, you kind of know, okay, he's got to have burn. Now, um, I'm not sure if I pointed this out and if you know this. In 7 point singleton, there's not a sideboard. So both these players are now just going to shuffle up. And then we're going to catch back, uh, back with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Jeremy on the left. Adam on the right. Jeremy winning the first game. So I guess it's Adam on the play. There we see a plateau. Oh, an Orcish captain. This card is so funny. 1-1 one, one, Arabia. Uh, sorry, not Arabian Nights. Fallen Empires, of course. You can attack. You can pay one, flip a coin. If the flip's in your favor, target Orc gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. If your flip is not in your favor, the Orc gets plus 0. Oh, uh, no, minus 0, oh, minus 2, so it dies. He's going to pump it up with the Pendlehaven, and then he's going to flip. Oh, I'm liking this combo. So making it a 2-3, and he's going to roll the dice. Is it going to get extra? Is it going to get a plus 2 bonus? This is so spicy, Adam. I'm liking this. You know what? I'm going to send you a Timmy pin. I'll ask for your uh, for your details in the 7-point Singleton Club. This is just extremely spicy. Really loving what I'm seeing here. Rolling the dice. And did he choose? Let's see how much damage he's do doing. Only 2 damage. So I guess he chose even. And remember, because of the Pendlehaven, it's a 2-3. Even more cool creatures here, the Hasban Ogres from Arabian Nights. Oh, really nice to see these creatures. And what I wanted to say is the Orcish Captain becomes a 2-3 because of the Pendlehaven. There we see a Chain Lightning on the Ogres and attack. And he's going to do the same trick again. And because he's got 3 Toughness... Ooh, does it get the bonus? No, it doesn't get the bonus. And because it has three toughness, it doesn't mind about the uh, minus two because it will still have one toughness. So it survives its own uh, misfortune, you could say. There is... Oh, he's now terroring the captain. He's done with that. And there we see two more goblins coming from Adam. I think the Pendlehaven is really a problem here for Jeremy. He has to find a way to get rid of the Pendlehaven, dealing three more damage. And Jeremy dropping to 13. Even more creatures. Brassclaw orcs. And oh, look at... Oh, Juzam Jin. 5-5 five, five Powerhouse, that is pretty sweet actually. But he can fly over it, of course, with the Goblin Balloon Brigade. That's exactly what he does. Adam's dropping to 11 and he's going to take a damage. And there's a Winter Orb. That could actually work. And, you know, Jeremy hasn't found any red mana this entire match. Attacking here for the first time. And we see Adam here dropping to 15. And interesting choosing to keep his uh, mountain untapped, attacking with everything, dealing four damage to this. Adam dropping to six, dropping to five because of his own Juzum Jin. He cannot really attack now, can he? Because then he's opening himself up and he's, he's already on five. So he's got to keep his Juzum Jin on guard duty. That's something you really don't want to do. Untapping Pendlehaven. He can attack with the Goblin uh, Balloon Brigade for sure. Could also consider attacking with both. 
I think this is probably the best move here, attacking with everything exactly, because you've got Pendlehaven anyway, so he's gonna block the orcs, use the Pendlehaven, gonna drop to two. He's not using Pendlehaven, interesting. That is interesting. What does he have up his sleeve that he doesn't want to use the Pendlehaven? Oh, demonic hordes. I mean, Jeremy, you are playing very cool creatures. I've got to give you a credits for that. Oh, man. But it really looks like you're going to lose this one. Yeah, attacking with the Goblin Balloon Brigade and using Pendlehaven. So that's that for Jeremy. But that does mean that we've got a 1-1. One -one and I, these decks are just really really fun to look at i'm really looking forward to game number three thank you gentlemen for these very interesting games and it's not decided yet who's gonna win it let's get ready for game three game number three in this best of five so we've got jeremy on the left adam on the right adam is probably gonna go on to play after losing uh, sorry jeremy of course after losing that one and there we see a black vice by adam so that can do some work and there is an ao pile from jeremy so uh, that's a card from Fallen Empires. It's an artifact. You can sacrifice it to deal two damage to any target. And there we see an Ankh of Mishra from Adam. So this kind of this classical old school combination, right? Black Vice, Ankh. Um, and he's playing another land. So taking some damage, passing turn to Adam here. Let's see what Adam can do. Playing a land, taking two damage as well. There is the Goblin King. And Jeremy doesn't have a mountain yet. Okay, there's the mountain. And there is a Setch Troll. So Setch Troll, a 3-3 three, three, and 1 black to regenerate. So Adam is probably not going to attack here. What is he going to do? Is he going to play out another land? Remember, the Ankh of Mishra works for both players. He is. So he's going to drop to 16, playing a Winter Orb. So he's kind of starting that, that, that all the land tricks that I talked about during the, uh, the deck tech of his deck. Wonder if we're going to see a Power Surge and a Mana Barbs as well. Let's first see what Jeremy can do. It looks like his hand is still pretty full, so he's still taking like little bits of damage from the vice. And using the AO pile on the Goblin King to just attack for three. So we see Adam dropping to 13. And Jeremy on 12. Tapping three. Oh, but lightning! This is good news for uh, Adam. Look at the life total halving there. And taking damage from the vice, he's now on five. So all of a sudden, Jeremy is really in trouble. He is attacking with his sedge. Adam on ten. He's got to empty his hand though, and that's hard because of the winter orb. Winter orb and vice is also kind of a nice classical combination. Taking two damage from his own land, I think. Right? He has gone to eight. Play a dwarven lieutenant. So one two creature, and for two red, you can give it plus one plus zero. Oh. Is Jeremy gonna attack? He probably needs to keep his Setch at bay to kind of block the Dwarf. Look at his hand, his hand is full. He's gotta empty cards, he's gotta offload. Okay, that's something, but he's attacking here. That's quite kind of dangerous. Bumping it up with the Howl from beyond. Adam, is he gonna, I think Adam's gonna survive to be honest. Because he, the, the problem of course for Jeremy is he cannot untap enough lands because of that Winter Orb. Yeah, Adam's on two, it's very close though. And then he can attack with the Dwarf, putting him on two. And I think he's just going to die from the Vice. Yeah, he's going to die from the Vice. Wow. That was tough. To be honest, when I saw Adam playing out the Black Vice, I thought, is it really going to be that relevant? Because Jeremy has a lot of low casting cost creatures. But that Vice did some work in combination, of course, with the Winter Orb and the Ankh of Mishra. That's really part of the strategy of Adam. So that means it's now 1-2. And we're going to go to game number four. Game number four in this best of five duel. And uh, wow, I mean, Adam, if you can win this one, you win the final. But I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up in a 2-2. These decks are just, they're so close. They're so, like, they've got similar strategy in a way. They've got kind of the same power level. There we see the Orcish Captain as well. I really love that you play with this one. And there we see a Goblin Balloon Brigade. So pretty quick start from Adam. Let's see if Jeremy can find a black creature with that bad moon. Maybe a Junin, a Freet. Oh, he doesn't have double black. He's got a Hammerheim, Basic Swamp, and a Factory. Urg Raiders would be nice. A lot of creatures actually in Jeremy's deck, especially the three drops, require a double black. Sorcerer's Queen, for example. And he's animating the Factory, attacking with it. Dealing two damage. Adam dropping to 18, and there's the attack. 
And Jeremy dropping to 17. Is he going to play another land? He is not. Okay, he cannot find the land. And there's a Juzum. Wow, man. This is bad news for Adam. A Juzum Jin, I think, is going to just stamp all over Adam. First five damage dealt. Adam dropping to 12. Finding, look at that. So that second black was, oh, six damage, actually, because of the Bat Moon. Hypnotic Spectre as well is looking really bad. At least there is a Lightning Bolt on the Hippie. That's something. And he's going to use the uh, ability there of the Orc. And he's going to deal two extra points of damage with the Orcish Captain. That is kind of sweet. I like that. And uh, Jeremy taking a damage. There's a Drain Life. Killing the Orcish Captain. Attacking for six. Look at the life total. Adam's on six now. He's got to keep the Goblin Balloon Brigade probably just to chump block. Or is he going to... Yeah, he's going to attack with the Goblin Balloon Brigade, keeping the Atok as a chump blocker here. I'm kind of expecting Jeremy here to animate the factory as well. Taking a damage from his own Juzum. Attacking with both here. I mean, this is looking very bad, right? And I'm going to drop to four. It's going to be really hard for him to uh, to win this one. There we see an El Hajash. That is pretty cool. You don't see it often. A 1-1. One, one. And for each point of damage it does, Jeremy gains one life. And nine for Jeremy and only four points for Adam. And that's it. Okay, he's saying, you know what? You've got this one. That means it's 2-2. Two, two. What a thriller. So we're going to go to game five to see who's going to win this one. Oh, man. Absolute, absolute thriller of a match here in the seven-point singleton finals of the month of June. No, of May. I'm recording this in June, but it's the finals of May. Game number five. Oh, man. Who is going to win this one? I guess Adam is a slight favorite because he's on a play. Does that make sense? But, I mean, it's really everybody's final. Let's see if one of the players has to take a mulligan. No, they don't. There's a vice. Ooh, that's a good start by Adam. Jeremy getting three points of damage without even starting. He's on 17. There's a Chaos Orb. He's going to drop to 14. Oh, he's going to start emptying his hand here. There's an Order. I wonder if he's going to flip on a land or on the Order if you're Adam. Probably on a land, right? There's something to say for both choices. Maybe he's not even going to activate it at all. Just going to keep his options open. Yeah, he is going to flip. And it looks like he's flipping on the Order. And there's a Wind Orb. Okay, that makes sense. Because of that Winter Orb, it makes more sense, of course, to flip on the Order. There's another land in a Kumbach, which is... But that Vice is just doing a lot of work. And there's an attack by the Witches. One, one point of damage for Adam. Going to drop to 19. Jeremy already on 11. And he hasn't dealt any... Adam hasn't dealt any combat damage. Oh, that Terror is important here. Or else it would have been almost over with that Bull Lightning. That Terror was really key. Adam on 11, Jeremy, uh, sorry, Jeremy on 11, Adam on 18. And uh, there's the Underworld Dreams. It looks like Jeremy is now on a low enough card total that the Vice doesn't really hurt him anymore. And now the Underworld Dreams can do some work for Jeremy. Adam's on 16, playing an Orcish Artillery. So we've got the Kumbach Witches on the side of Jeremy and the Orcish Artillery on the side of Adam. That means if Jeremy uses the combat Kumbach Witches, uh, you know, Adam can deal one point to any target. He can point it to the Witches and then he can use his Artillery to kill the Witches. So basically, it's really difficult now for Jeremy to keep using the Witches. That's what it comes down to, I guess. But Adam is completely tapped out, so his own uh, Winter Orb could kind of start working against him here. And of course, uh, you know, he's also looking at that Underworld Dreams. He is still on 16, though. That we've seen with both of these decks, it can go quite quick with your life total. And I, I just think that Terror on that Bull Lightning, that was absolute key. It looks like Jeremy's going to look up some ruling. Maybe something that has to do with the Kumbach Witches. That one damage that your opponent gets to do. Tapping a black, playing a dark ritual, playing a demonic tutor. That means he's got one black floating still. wonder what he's going to look up. I mean, I have to say in Singleton, a demonic tutor is much more fun because there are just so many targets. There's more, more variation and you don't have... Usually in, in regular old school, when you tutor, you tutor for an ancestral recall or something like that. And you kind of know 
what your opponent's going to tutor for. But here in Singleton, it's not that clear. And I like that. I love I love it when it's diverse, when you have multiple lines of play. It makes it more interesting. So he's shuffling up again, tapping, and there's an Urk Raiders. I wonder if that's the card that he's looped up. I'm pretty sure it's not. But of course, he can attack with the Urk Raiders. Then Adam can block with the artillery, and then he can ping it with the Kumbach. That's a line of play you can follow. Attacking with both here, interesting. Remember, the artillery is just a 1-3, so it can't, cannot kill this creature. So I guess it makes sense as well. Adam dropping to 14 here. And, oh, he's blocking the Urk Raiders, and then he's activating the Orcish artillery. Okay, that makes sense. So that's why Adam is taking three more damage from his own artillery, dropping here to 10 with the Underworld Dreams damage as well. It's going pretty quick here, so it's hard to follow from time to time. But Adam is on 10. Jeremy's on 11. Tapping three red. There's Brothers of Fire. I think Brothers of Fire here in this scenario with the Winter Orb is just it's just a 2-2 body, but it's good to block the Witches with. There we see an Ao pile, so kid decide to take care of the um of the Orcish artillery, you know, using the uh, the Ao pile on the artillery and the witches. But, you know, I guess then he's opening up as well. And look at the life totals. Again, it's, it's pretty close, right? We've got Adam on 9, Jeremy on 10. And uh, he's now dropping to 8 because of the dreams. And he's just passing turn here. Okay. So let's see what Adam can do. Looking at his hand. I mean, he's pretty low on land as well. Only two untapped mountains. And I mean, what a final this is, you know, game number five. These are the type of finals you want to see. End step, Jeremy dealing a de point of damage with the Kumbach, which is, that means both players are losing a life here. Seven against nine. And, uh, you know, I have to say it kind of looks like it's in favor of Jeremy here with end the dreams and the AO pile on board and the Kumbach, which is, there we see a goblin digging team and an attack. That attack makes absolute sense. You have to do something when you're at him. You cannot just slowly sit back and die. And now you're kind of forcing a reaction from Jeremy, right? He's got the 1-3. You can block the 2-2 two, two or the 1-3. Blocking the 1-3, taking 2 damage, it seems. Going to drop to 8. Or did he take 1 damage? Anyway, also using the Kumbach. And we see 5 for Adam now. When he uses the Aopo, he's going to drop to 3 if he wants to. So this is very, very, very close fifth game. Both players really low and both players have decks that can just finish it with some burn. Four cards in hand for Jeremy. He's looking at the board. What is he going to do? Seven against five. Tapping three black. Ooh, he's going to trap one of the creatures. Probably the artillery, right? Oh, he's going to open it up. So Goblin Digging Team in the Oubliette. Interesting choice. Is he afraid of a possible Goblin King? Interesting choice to put that in the Oubliette. I think I would have gone for the Orcish Artillery, to be honest. Although, I mean, Adam is so low in life, he probably can't use the artillery. He actually cannot use it anymore because he's on four, so that makes sense. And maybe I would have gone for the Brothers of Fire. Anyway... I'm sure he has his reasons. He's in the finals because he can play cards. So uh, let's see what Adam's going to do here. This is so close. Remember, Jeremy has that AO pile that's good for two more damage. So practically, Adam is only on two life and not on four because of that AO pile. So he really needs to, needs to think he's really behind. Tapping three. What is he going to do? Playing a Goblin Flotilla, 2-2 two, two Island Walker. Oh, Goblin Grenade! Is that... No, that's not enough. He can make it into a draw, though. Is he making it into a draw? How does this work? So, Goblin Grenade. This means he's going to go to 2. He's going to use it. It looks like it's a draw. I think it's actually a draw. Man, that means we're going to have another game. <laughs> oh, man. 
this ended up in a draw. And I think for Adam, it was the, the best thing that he could do. It took me a moment to to understand what was going on in this match. But um, yeah, it's, it's a draw here in game number five. That means we're going to see a game number six to decide who's going to win this absolute thriller of a final. Oh, oh my God. Game number six, the deciding game, or maybe, you know, maybe it's going to be a draw again. And then we have a game number seven. It is possible. And uh, as you can see, I've kind of uh, put this game in regular speed because this is a decider. So let's see. It looks like Jeremy is putting a card on the bottom and Adam's starting here with a Goblins of the Flark. So some early aggression. Let's see what Jeremy can do. Starting with one card less. Tapping. Can we see? Okay, Dark Ritual, Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh, El Hajaj instead. So it's a 1-1, and for each damage it does, Jeremy gains a life. Pretty cool to see that card. And there's a Chain Lightning on the El Hajaj. And an attack here by Adam. So that means Jeremy's dropping to 19. There is a City of Brass taking a damage from his own city. And playing a Black Knight. That is actually pretty good. And Adam just wasting his chain on that El Hajash. And oh, there we see a Bolt. But even more important, he's not playing a land. It looks like Adam is dry on lands. Cannot find any lands. This could be very unfortunate for Adam here. There we see an Order of the Ebon Hand. Even more aggression. I wonder what Adam can do. Cannot find more ways of dealing with creatures. He still doesn't have a land. There is a bad moon to make matters even worse. Dealing three damage now with the order. Adam dropping to 17. And Adam just needs lands. That's what he needs. Attacking here with the Goblin Raiders. Jeremy going to go to 16. And three uh, lands is not great for Jeremy, but it's kind of enough to play a lot of threats like, like the Hypnotic Spectre. So it's now a 3-3 because of that Bad Moon. And uh, Adam will have to start discarding cards, attacking with the Goblin Raiders. And uh, Jeremy not taking any risks here, just saying, you know what, I'm just going to take that one point of damage there. We see Adam discarding. Oh, man, that's so bad for Adam here in the finals. Played Five games, game number six, and then he cannot find any lands. And look at that, an attack for six. And he also has to discard a card. So this is just awful for Adam here. I think he's going to drop to eight, if I'm not mistaken. He was on 14. He's going to take six. He's going to drop to eight, exactly. And he's going to lose a card as well. This is just, you know, horrible when you're Adam. It's like a nightmare scenario. Choosing the first one there. That's a giant strength. So two red card from Legends. You can give target creature plus two, plus two. And finally, Adam's found another land. That's pretty good. Land number two. Hopefully, he can do something with it. There's an AO pile. Okay, so he can use the AO pile to at least get rid of the Order of Light Burr. Because of the Bad Moon, he cannot kill the Hypnotic Spectre with it. Attacking, chump blocking the Order. That makes sense. Taking three, dropping to five. Ah, oh, man. Adam needs a miracle here. Losing another card to the Hypnotic, an Orcish Artillery. Let's see what he can do here. Finding a Mox. Using the Aeopile, getting rid of the Order. But, I mean, Jeremy also has that Mistress Factory now he can swing in with. So I think next turn Jeremy can win this unless Adam has something. Maybe a Shatter or something like that. There's an Activation. There's an attack for five. That means he's going to die. No, he's not going to die. There's a shatter. He's going to drop to two. And oh, there's the bolt. It's over. It's all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Adam, you had no chance in game number six. Every single deck needs lands. Even a deck that's actually like yours doesn't require that much land. But still, I mean, you need more than one land, you know. Um, so, Jeremy, you've won this one. And I just want to thank both of you for sharing this uh, this great final, this great match of Seven Point Singleton here on Timmy Talks. It's been a lot of fun to look at and to commentate. 
Man, it's been it's it's been interesting, and and I have to be honest, when I when I looked at the deck list, I mean, I saw things I liked, but I also thought, okay, both of these players are playing pretty aggressive. They're playing with a lot of direct damage. This can be over soon. And look at us now. We're in what is it? We're in 40 minutes of recording, and we're not even. Well, now we're finished. So, uh, well, thank you uh, very much, both of you. For, uh, for this match and if you're looking at this and you're thinking hey I like 7 point singles and I would like to join in in these tournaments it's actually really easy you can check the description below there you will find uh, a time uh, no not a timestamp there you'll find a link to the Facebook fi uh, page of 7 point singleton and you can just join and you can sign up for the monthly tournament so each month they're holding a tournament as long as there's uh, interest in it so if you're interested go to Facebook Get in touch with these guys. Join join the Seven Point Singleton bandwagon. Um, and as for now, here on Timmy Talks, this was the episode for today. Thank you very very much for watching it, and thank you for supporting the channel. Talking about supporting the channel, if you want to help Timmy Talks out, you can do a few things that are free. First off, you can leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this match, or just leave anything here in the comment section. It all helps. And also you can like this video. Liking the video shows YouTube that this is good content and that you want to see more of it, right? So it really helps me in the YouTube algorithm. And you can also become a subscriber yet. So um, yeah, yet. So if you're not yet a subscriber, that's what I'm trying to say. You can become one. Uh, and of course that helps the channel as well. It shows to YouTube that uh, you appreciate what I do here. So if you've done that already, thank you very much. If not, please consider becoming a subscriber. And then you can also become a patron of the channel. You can support Timmy Talks financially. How? It is really easy and it already starts with $1 a month. There's a info card popping up right now. Click on that info card and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can read all about uh, joining Timmy Talks and supporting the channel financially as well. And it's got a lot of perks. First off, I can send you a really cool pin. You can see it here uh, in front of you, a photo of that pin. So I can send it to you as a thank you for, for joining Timmy Talks. And also you get access to the Discord of Timmy Talks. That means that you can join in for the tournaments. And last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. And that is fantastic, isn't it? After each video, I show an end scroll of all the fantastic, wonderful, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. You know what? Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.